Hey everyone, it's almost Father's Day, and by no coincidence, Dads vs. the World is now available as an audiobook. <music> Phil Thrawn is back to bring Chris, John, and Eric back to life for this one. This is a prequel to Dads vs. Zombies. This is a collection of short stories and a novella, and the stories in this one are a little more uh, down to earth. It's the, the dads living in their typical suburban neighborhood, uh, dealing with the stress of every day and the stress of living so close to one another. So we have stories about John going to the grocery store. We have stories about uh, stories about Eric being the tooth fairy for the very first time. And we, there's another story about John and Chris competing to have the best yard for Halloween and naturally tasers are involved. So these stories are really a little more day-to-day -day kind of stuff, but uh, really fun, really funny, and they all culminate in a novella where, of course, the enemy is the big bad HOA. Um, and it really kind of gets into a bit of the backstory of why these dads have the relationship they do in Zombies, uh, why they have the relationship they do with Austin in Zombies. But over the years, some of my favorite comments from people have been about this about these stories and about this book. I, I've gotten emails, I've gotten comments on ads, messages, reviews, everything, where people talk about how much they love to read these together. Um, it could be from a husband or a wife telling me, I love to read this out loud to my spouse or my partner. They just really, I think, you know, they see a lot of themselves in these or whatever, but they get such a kick out of them, they just, they love to share it with one another. So, um, I've always loved hearing those comments. I think it's one of the coolest things that uh, reading a book, which is usually such a, a personal experience, has become kind of a just a shared a shared joy. So I'm I love that the audiobook's out and people can now listen to it uh, together. Uh, it'd be great for a road trip if you're going somewhere for Father's Day, or whatever. But uh, it's it's fun stuff. So um, what we're gonna do now? Phil was kind enough to send along some outtakes from the recording. If you've listened to Phil do any of my books or any of the books, you know how awesome he is. And so these outtakes are, are, are a lot of fun for me to listen to for a couple reasons. One, I wrote these a long time ago, and when I wrote them, I had no idea anyone would ever be recording them in a recording booth. So there are some word, there's some word play in there and some tongue twisters that would trip up a narrator but it's not his fault and it's not my fault. I didn't do it on purpose. Now I do it on purpose. Back then I didn't do it on purpose, but um, you know, there's a little bit of that. He had some fun with that, but it's also just listening to him read the material. By the time we get it from him, it's it, it's so polished and awesome and excellent and, and, and so great to listen to that, uh, you know, I forget that he had to read it first at one point too. And so it's nice to hear him uh, enjoying a lot of the, the silliness in the books as well. So we're going to go ahead and play those outtakes. The outtakes are included on the audiobook, but I wanted to share them here as well. So we're about to do that. Please uh, have a wonderful Father's Day. Pick up the book, Dads vs. the World. It's on Audible. Phil Throw on Reddit. It's great. Have a great weekend. One past, one past, step the all he had gone way beyond the fake beer and hat. From boots to the bag, the content of content stuff. The bag of bows exploded as he tore it open. Festive colors showered down upon him as she grabbed. Eric scotted, scotted? Eric scotted pay. The mixed breed licked the dog. Well, he pulled the receiver closer to examine the keypad and the del the delborg and the delborg rang. <laughs> the de uh. He pulled the receiver closer to examine the keyport. Why can't I say keypad? Examine the keypad and the doorbell rang. He never quite got it to his ear before his was able to tell. Okay, that one was a typo. Austin tried to snifle, snifle, <laughs> snifle, steez. Austin tried to snifle. <laughs> Austin tried to snifle. <laughs> I'm going to have to skip this line. Sorry, Ben. Jack turned somewhere. I am completely lost. Now, as you know, two of our neighbors are running for the president of the Homeowners Association for the Creeks of Sage Valley Fades... Ah, oh, fuck. 
is sacrificing the heritage of this great Nathan Nathan, this great Nathan. Mr. Peterson, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you in the pirate costume? Hurdy-gurdy, man. My son is dancing. <laughs> I'm not going to get by this. He pulled his son closer. This, <laughs> this is my monkey. He dances for Nick Lagma. <laughs> he moved it back around to show Eric. I'm a hurdy-gurdy man. He pulled it. <laughs> this, is, this is my monkey. <laughs> John held out a candy bar. It was king-sized. King-sized candy bars? Yeah, nothing but the best, right? And there's no topping a king-sized candy bar. Is there, Chris? <laughs> Chris was stumped for a moment, but the answer came to him like the flash of a taser. <laughs> full <laughs> full sized cakes and pies. A bright light snapped on overhead, and the garage door sprang to life. The metal door groaned and squeaked as it allowed the daylight to pour into the room. Oh, crap, the wife's home. John <laughs> <laughs> Help me move the table, guys. No way. I'm not doing that. Besides, I'm way too busy with my band. Right, your band. Carcass of Death. That's not our name anymore. We changed it. To what? Defenestration. <laughs> It'll be fine. Do you want to see it? Ryan nodded and reached for the film. The assistant handed it to him. Don't do that. He's really good at breaking things. Oh, he can't break anything in here. Ryan took the film, examined it once, and shoved it into the lens of the X-ray's tube. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, he's very advanced for his age. He breaks things at a first grade level. The assistant dug her fingers and... <laughs> You're going to hear a whir and a click, and then we're done, okay? Ryan nodded. Okay. The tech ran from the room. A moment later, there was a whir and a scream. <laughs> you jumped? He pinched me. The assistant sighed. In his defense, that scream was ridiculous. <laughs> there was movement behind him. A giant, evil-looking bunny was coming at him with a carrot. Perched like a dagger. <laughs> the, 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 the evil bunny. Perched like a dagger, the vegetable stopped short of striking him. Still, the attempted herbicide. <laughs> Attempted herbicide. 